epicenter of the outbreak in Europe, the situation considered so desperate that even China, where the outbreak began, sent a plane to take its citizens home. The virus is spreading, daily life disrupted, but it hasn't silenced this Florentine opera singer. As Europe mourns its dead, tries to heal its sick, communities, people, are doing what they can. Jenny Hill, BBC News, Berlin. Well, Holly Moy is studying her teaching English as a foreign language course in San Sebastian in Spain. She had booked a flight home and at the last minute decided to stay. Uh, nice to see you, Holly, but just explain why. Um, well, it, it was a really difficult decision because I was planning to be here until May. Um, I was doing my course, which I was really excited about doing. We were two weeks into the course. Um, and things just changed really quickly here. So on Thursday, the school was talking about shutting down most of the, the classes, but letting our class carry on because we were only sort of 10 people and we only had 10 or 20 students. And then, so that was the decision Friday morning. By Friday lunchtime, all of us were kind of collectively thinking, I don't know if this seems like the right thing. Everybody else is staying home. Maybe we're being a bit reckless. Maybe it's, you know, it's maybe we should be putting other people's health first, really. So we all started thinking, well, maybe we shouldn't be coming. The school kind of came to the same decision. So by lunchtime, we'd all decided that would be our last day. And then on the Friday afternoon one of them one of uh, my fellow uh, students discovered that the town she was staying in Vittorio was going on lockdown that night and she lives in France so she decided to go home to go to her boyfriend and um and everybody was saying what are you going to do and I was like oh I don't know because if I go home what does that mean like we decided we were going to delay the course until the 20th of April I think we're due to start the course again everything being well we don't really know what's going to happen here um so I really, I really didn't know what to do, and I spent all weekend talking to my parents and going, what do I do? Do I come they're home? They're in the UK, are they? Yeah, so my mum and my dad and all my family are all in the UK, and they're obviously, you know, when you're far away and you, don't, you, know, you see all these things on the news, you don't really know what's happening, so we had lots of conversations about, should I come back, and would they be worried about me if I stay? Would I be worried about them if I stayed? Because, you know, suddenly if there, if there aren't any flights home... And I can't get home if something happens to them or if something happens to me out here and I'm in a foreign hospital, they don't know what's happening to me. So it was really, it was sort of really difficult to know what to do. And I really didn't know. And in the end, I, I sort of thought about it overnight. I woke up in the morning, I thought, no, I am going to go home because I don't, you know, if things go bad, I want to be near my family. So I booked a flight home. And then I started hearing that like travel agents, you know, like um, insurance companies weren't issuing travel insurance anymore and people were stopping flights to Europe. And I thought, actually, if I go home, I might not be able to come back. And, you know, my real job is being a freelance documentary maker in TV and I'm looking on my Facebook feed and everybody's telly jobs are getting cancelled left, right and centre. You know, it's a really bad time to be a freelancer in general. I, um, I, I, get, I get that. I'll, I'll come to that broader, yeah. broader, broader in a moment. But but you are mm. in effect in lockdown uh, on your own, uh, and, and, yeah, and so could, could be so for quite a while. Yeah. So basically, my decision was if I want to get stuck somewhere, where do I want to be stuck, really? And my plan was to spend the summer out here in Spain. I was going to work. I was going to see about maybe seeing finding if there's a way to sort of stay here longer term. And if I go home. I may not be able to come back and that might ruin my plans. And I thought, actually, if everybody's going into lockdown here, if I go home, I'm going to have to put myself into self-quarantine for two weeks to make sure I don't infect anyone. So I won't be seeing anyone anyway. And by that point, you know, I know the government is talking about different things, but I really believe in a week's time, the UK will be in a very similar position. So I thought, actually, if I stay here to go home, I would have to get on a train full of people, go to an airport full of people, get on a plane full of people, get on another train in England full of people, just to go back and put myself in self-quarantine, by which time I could have either caught the virus or given to the virus to how, who knows how many people. Whereas actually, if I stay here and do what everybody else is doing, which is just stay home, you know, yeah. it's, I, it feels Holly, quite I, safe to me. You know, it feels you, like the sensible thing to be doing. Yeah, you, you've got nothing much to do other than watch television, I guess. Now, I'm just wondering what you make yeah. of the different re approach that you're seeing mm -hmm. there in Spain and what you're seeing of the, of the response here. 
I mean, yeah, we've all been having endless conversations about that, and there's endless conversations going on about, on, about it on Facebook and with friends and family at home. I mean, I've also got friends and family in, who are in Italy who have been in this situation for a lot longer, so I also spend a lot of time talking to them about what they're experiencing. And I, and I suppose what I really feel, you know, when I talk to my parents, I feel like I actually feel quite safe here. You know, everybody's in quarantine. It's very calm. Everybody's at home. They're just going to the shops if they need to. And then they're going home again. And there's plenty of food in the shops. Everything's very calm. And it's funny because as soon as that is the situation that you're in, when you look at everybody at home, still going out, still going to bars, you know, you hear about concerts still happening and, you know, big events still happening. You kind of think, oh my God, like, what is everybody doing? This thing is spreading so fast. But I also have to remind myself that, you know, a, less than a week ago, my dad was calling me going, oh, are you worried about this coronavirus thing in Spain? And I literally hadn't even paid any attention to the news and just had my head down in my course. And no one was talking about it. And it, it changed so quickly in Spain. You know, literally a couple of nights ago, me and my friends were out eating dinner in the bars like everybody is in England now. So I do have to remind myself that England probably is only a week behind where we are and what feels normal to you is what everybody else is doing, right? But it does, it does feel now that everything's on lockdown, it feels a lot safer and it feels like the numbers are going up really quickly here. And now you just think, okay, well, you know, I'm in a flat all by myself. You know, I was staying with a family. Well, I was staying with a woman and when everything locked down, her two daughters came home from university to be with her. So I moved into this flat by myself so they Holly. can have a bit of space. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> really good to hear from you. Thank you very much for that. That's Holly Moy in San Sebastian. Good luck with your lockdown. Nice to talk Thanks. to you. Thanks. Well, let's uh, see what's happening elsewhere in the world. Let's take you, in fact, live to New York, to Manhattan, because uh, we've got a shot there. That, that is actually uh, just off Times Square. Uh, as you can see, what would normally be a really busy, bustling morning in New York is everything but. Now, this comes as the New York governor announcing that troops are going to be sent into a town not far, in fact, from Manhattan in an attempt to contain the spread of the coronavirus. The National Guard will deliver food to some individuals told to isolate. This is in New Rochelle. Uh, but as you can see, things very far from normal in New York City. Well, as we mentioned earlier, uh, two cities, including New York and Los Angeles, are now taking drastic steps to try to contain the virus, shutting schools, bars and restaurants. Our North America correspondent David Willis reports. Life in many major cities here will soon resemble that of Europe. Restaurants, bars and other public places are about to start shutting their doors. And the government is recommending that gatherings of 50 or more people either be cancelled or postponed. 